All right, Shalom, Shalom. It's Brother Yatazadak here of Israel. I'd like to start off by giving honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Kakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, Great Mill Stone. All right, so today we're going to go into Deuteronomy chapter 21. Going into the Hebrew, it's like it. Lord will you edify, give no honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Kakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, Great Mill Stone. Right. Let's get right into it. So it reads, um, Kaya, um, Yamataza'a, Halal, Ba Adama. Right, because there be found, uh, slain, right, in, in the, uh, in the land, right? Salakia. <laughs> But really it says, um, because they be found pierced, because that word halal, salakia, means uh, uh, to pierce through, right? Upon the ground, right? Adama means ground, right? Ashar Yahawu Alahayaka Matan Laka, which the Lord your power will have given unto thee, right? To possess, La Vashata. Um, uh, to possess Nepal, Bashada, Laa, Nawadai, Maya, Hakawa, Hakawa, right? Nepal means uh, fallen, right? That uh, the na before it makes it a uh, present tense, right? Or an or a verb, meaning uh, it's it's a, it's present tense or past tense, right? Or it's a verb being carried out, right? Um, in the field, right? And it's not known who smote him, right? And really, you can read that word, uh, nadai, because it just means, right? Yadai means to know. Nadai means known, right? Just like, um, um, Nepal. Nepal means, actually, that's, that's the root word. It's just Nepal. It means to fall or something that, that is falling, right? So it reads, um, because they be found one that is pierced through upon the field, which the Lord your power has given unto thee to possess one that has fallen in the field and is, it is not known who smote him, right? Maya means who? Hak means to smite, right? Wayatazaawa, Sakwanyaka, Wa, um, Shapatiaka, right? And they will go out, the elders, your elders, um, and your judges, right? Wa Madadwa, and they will measure, right? And will measure, right? To the cities, Al Ha Aryam, right? The word Madad means to measure, right? Ashar Sabiyab. Sabiabath or Salakia Sabiabtha, right? Uh, which are round about, uh, he that is pierced. How many he? Uh, halal means to pierce or to be thrust through, right? So and they will go out, your elders and your judges, and they will and will measure to the cities which are round about. Right, uh, he that is thrust through. Wahaya ha ayar ha kwaraba al ha halal, and and it will come to pass the city which is near to he that is thrust through. Right, 
Walakwahua, and will take the elders of Kwanya of the city, Ha'ayar, uh, that is, Ha'hawa, uh, Agalath, meaning uh, uh, a heifer, right? Of the herds, Bakwar, um, Ashar La'a Aibar, which has not been worked upon it, Baha, uh, Ashar La'a Masaka, or Salaki Masaka, Bayel, right? Which has not been, uh, um, drawn out, right? That word Mashak means to draw out, right? Uh, upon an oh, upon a yoke, Baal, Ba meaning in, Al means a yoke, right? As in an iron yoke, a collar, right? Salaki. Uh, verse 4. Wa hawaradwa. Zakwanya ha'ayar, right? And and will go down the elders of the city. Uh, that is ha'hawa. Um... Atha ha aigala with the heifer, right? So sometimes, Salakia, that word atha means uh, to or with. To a brook, al uh, nahal, because that word al means to or towards, right? Ayatan, right? Um. That word ayatan means uh, perpetual or ever flowing, right? Perennial, right? You can use it also in the sense of uh, one that is uh, uh, constant, right? So if you say, um, right, um, he is constantly contending with me, you would say, uh, um, hawa uh, ayatan. Rayab, uh, uh, Rayab Athaya, right? He is constantly contentious with me, right? Ashar La'a Ya'ibad, which has not been uh, worked upon it, Bawa, uh, Wala'a Yazarai, right? And has not been sown, and they have not sown, right? Wa Arapwa, right? And its neck, uh, hither, Shum, Ataha Agala, to the heifer upon the brook, Banakal, right? So, in the sense that, um, uh, says verbatim, <clears throat> Salaki says and we'll go down the elders the city that is right um or salaki it means uh, to bring and and we'll bring down the elders of the city that is to the heifer to a brook uh ever flowing or continual right because a uh, um a brook is like a uh, is a stream right Nahar means river, right? A stream is just a smaller river, right? So they, really it says to a stream ever flowing, right? Ashar, which they have not tilled upon it. Because that, that word means, a, Ibad means to serve or till, right? Whereas in working an animal, right? In agriculture, right? So it also means work, right? Which uh, they have not tilled upon it, but here it's talking about the brook, right? It has to be a small river, right? Which is a brook. They would take the heifer there, right? To one that is continually streaming, right? Not one that has, that is enclosed. It has to be, you know, it has to continually stream from one place to another, right? 
and they must not have tilled upon it, meaning, so you can't, you know, you can work the land as in you plant crops in the land, and, but in a river or a brook, you can't plant crops, but, but that's implying that it has not been used, for example, you know, for drinking water or, you know, um, um, for purposes of bathing, right? It has to be, you know, a uh, brook that is, has not been used, right? Simply put, right? They have not sown upon it, right? That's, you know, basically what is what it's saying when it says it has not been uh, tilled nor sown upon it, right? Meaning you don't get your fish from there, you don't, right? Because it's used for a different purpose other than drinking water or whatever the case may be. Water to boil food, right? Um, so it says, Wa'irapwa shum, and its neck hither, right? Meaning, you know, here it says uh, to break its neck, but that's not what it's saying. Me meaning, what you're actually going to do is uh, go to the brook, right? You're going to take the neck of the heifer, right? And, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? You're going to, um, you know, it's really, really doesn't say exactly what you're going to do with it, but you can either imply that, it either implies that, you know, you either going to, you're going to break its neck there and then just leave it by the brook as a, you know, so people won't know that uh, it, it, it's not usable, right? And eventually the beast of the field will will, uh, will eat it or, you know, um, eventually it will decompose and that decomposition is really just good for the land, right? For the uh, soil, right? But, you know, my thought, my thought is personally, it's telling you that you're going to take the neck, the neck, um, and you're gonna you're gonna cut it in the neck, slaughter it, as in slaughtering it, not you know uh, chopping it up. But you're gonna take the neck, you're gonna slice the neck, let the blood drip uh, into the brook, right? Not the corpse. You're not gonna throw the corpse in there, but just the blood, right? To symbolize, right? Uh, um, um, the blood uh, cleansing right, the land, because of that slain person, right, like scriptures say, I believe that's Numbers chapter, uh, 32, or 31, where you, the land cannot be cleansed, but the blood of him that shed it, right, but since that person wasn't there, they don't know who did it, right, you're going to take the elders of the city, which are representative of that land, which is closest to it, right, and they're going to, uh, slice the neck of the heifer, let that blood flow in that stream to symbolize a cleansing of the land, right? Which is why that's the whole purpose, right? They don't know who did it. So they take the elders that are closest to that city, that are closest to that locale, right? To uh, 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 place the blood of the heifer, heifer into, into the river, symbolizing a cleansing, right? So this is like a uh, cleansing ceremony, right? Because again, they can't shed the blood of, of him that, that killed that man, right? Because they don't know who did it, right? Deuteronomy 25 and 5, Salakia 21 and 5, Wanagashwa, Hakahanyam, Benaya, Lawaya, right? And will come near the priest. Uh, the sons of Levi, that's priests, plural, right? Uh, because upon them, right, which is uh, a Kaya Bama, um, which is a, a or, or Slakia, it's actually Kaya Bum. Right, um, uh, 
or really you could just you can say Bama. Kaya Bama because upon them has chosen Bahar Yahweh Alhayaka the Lord your power to minister Lasharathwa uh, to him right Wala Barak and to bless in the name of the Lord Bashem Yahweh Wa'al uh, Payacham and upon their mouth meaning the priest meaning upon what they what they uh, set in order right or command right uh Yahya right uh will uh will be right uh call Rayab all contention will call Nagai and all assault meaning you know they're gonna make decision on these matters and that's gonna be according to the law right so it says, and they will come near the priests, the sons of Levi, because upon them is chosen the Lord your power, to minister and to bless in the name of the Lord, upon their and upon uh, their mouth will will be all contention and all uh, assault. Because that word nagai means to touch or stroke, but here it's in the sense of uh, all matter of dispute, whether it be physical or not physical, right? Which is that's why it says call Rayab. Called the guy, right? Verse six. What calls Aquanya, Haayar, Hahawa, Hakorabium, and all the others of the city, uh, uh, that is, will come near to the to the slain. Al Hahalal, right? Uh, ya Rachatazawa, right? They will wash. They will wash to their hands. Atha. Yad yaham, right? The word rachataza means to wash, right? Yah meaning they. Rachataza they will wash, right? Uh, atha to. Yad meaning hand. The ya after that makes it plural. Uh, hum is meaning them, their hand. Their hands, right? Al Ha'igala upon the heifer, right? Uh, ha Irapa, um, the neck, right? Or upon the neck in the brook, Banachol, right? So, in all elders of the city, that is, they will come near to the slain. They will wash to their hands upon the heifer's neck in the brook. Wa Ainawa, Wa Amarwa, Yadyanawa, and they will answer and say, right, our hands, right, have not poured La'a Shapakwa to the blood this, Atha Hadam Haza, right. And our not and our eyes have not seen it, right? Wa ayanya nawa ba'a ra'awa, right? Meaning, um, so basically it just says, and we'll answer and we'll say our hand have not poured this blood, and our eyes have not seen it, right? So that's part of the ceremony. They're gonna stand over the heifer. Take water from the brook, right? Wash their hands over the, the heifer's neck, right? Symbolizing the cleansing of the blood, right? They're gonna say, right? We have not poured this blood, meaning we had no part in this, right? And we have not seen who did it. Kapar la aimka yashal ashar padayath, right? Oton for your people, Israel, right, which uh, you preserved, right, which you had preserved, uh, Lord, Yahweh, Wa'al Tatan, Adam, Nakwaya, and do uh, do not uh, appoint uh, blood innocent in our midst, in the midst of your people, 
Bakul Rab, I'm Ka. Right? Israel, Yasha'ala, Wana Kapar, Laham, Hadam. Right? And uh will be and will be atoned unto them the blood, right? But that word kapar also means to cover, right? So here it actually says, and will be covered uh uh the innocent blood uh for them, right? So verbatim it says uh right, atone for your people Israel, right, which you have preserved, uh Lord, and do not Account in its blood in our midst, right? In the midst of your people, uh, Israel, right? And it will be covered unto them the innocent blood, right? Wa ata tabayar hadam hanakwaya, and you will consume blood innocent from your midst. Mako rabka kayata aisha. Ashayar or Salakihayashar, because you will do what is upright in the eyes of, of the Lord. Ba Ayanya Yahawa. Verse 10. Kaya Tataza'a La Malchama. Right? Because you go out to battle against your enemies. Al Ayabiaka Wa Nathan. Wanathanwa Right and will place the Lord your power place them the Lord your power in your in your hand Yahawa Alahayaka Bayarka Wa Shab uh Shabya um Wa Shabayata Shabayawa right and surely you will take him captive, right? Because that word, the real word is Shabaya, uh, meaning um, captivity, uh, literally means um, slavery, right? So it says, because you go out to battle against your enemies, and the Lord your power will place them in your hand, right? And, sh and, uh, and uh, surely you take him captive, right? Wa ra'ayat bashabaya, and you will see upon the captives a woman, a shath, a yapath, the ar, beautiful of visage. The word uh, yapa means beautiful, the ar means uh, visage or, or form, right? Wa Hashak Hash uh Wahashak uh Washak Wa right? And you delight upon her Baha Right Ba meaning in the ha is talking about uh, uh the woman, right? Wala kwach wala kwach ta right and you 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 take her unto thee, laka la asha to the woman right wife woman right but really that just means woman right because you have you have the you have woman and then you have bride right there's no actual uh word for uh wife Bride. I believe that's Kala. Yeah, Kala. Daughter in law, bride, spouse. Right. So really that just means, right, bride. But Sha, that, that just means woman, right? So it says, verse 11, 
and you see upon the captives a woman beautiful visage and you delight in her and you take her unto thee uh, for a woman right you could say for wife but really it says for woman la asha waha waha batha waha baatha right al the wak and you bring her in uh uh to the mist right and the to the mist of your house by yathka right wagalah wagal wagalha right you will uh shave that's in the sense of uh, baldness galach means uh um uh to uh to make bald right and it's a derivative of uh, gala galaha which means to remove right and um korak which means uh baldness as in complete baldness, right? Quorach means complete baldness, right? Galach means um, um, just baldness, as in, um, right? You cut your hair, but you still see hair there. You know, for example, you use a you use a, uh, a cutting machine. You know, you cut it to the lowest size. You still see the hair, but when you shave your hair bald, it's completely bald, right? So that's where you get galach from. It just means, uh, right, to shave, right, or uh, it just means to make bald. But you could say either or, but the closest to it is, is to make bald, but not like korach. It just means in a sense of, you, you know, really short, you know, uh, the shortest possible length, you know. So you're not gonna take a you know a sharp razor you know and put the shaving cream and make it all you know super bald you know it's just talking about you're gonna cut all her hair right it's gonna be almost you know bald right um so this so wagal uh, and you will make bald to her head, ta raasha, right? And you will uh, do wa ashata, right? Uh, right. Um, as in, uh, you know, you're gonna you're gonna pair her nails, you know. Aisha means to do or make, right? As in paring her nails, you know. She might have had long nails and maybe some tribal, you know, whatever the case may be from her um, from her land, you know, tribal design or whatever the case may be. She might have had uh, even rings that, you know, wrapped around her, around her nail, all that would come off, right? So you and you will pair uh, to her nails, ata taza taza parnaya, right? Which um, let's get that word for nail, All right? Or actually, we don't have to. It just um, you can look that up on your own, right? So you will pair. Or Salakim read a verbatim, right? You will bring her into the midst of your house, right? And shave her head and pare her nails, right? Verse 13, Waha Sayara, right? Um, and you will turn back to her clothing, Atha, um, Shamalta, right? Of her captivity, Shabaya, meaning her, uh, her, uh, whether she was, you know, um, 
taken in, in the midst of that war, you know, she may have, you know, her clothes might have got burnt up. So you put her into, uh, you know, just some, uh, you wrapped her up in a mantle, right? And it was still, that, that was her, her, uh, her captive clothing. Or it could have been her clothing from her, from her home, uh, homeland, right? Her tribal clothing, right? From a partner, my, my Alia, right? Waya Shaba, right? Um, and she will dwell, right? Wa, meaning Anne, Yasha means to dwell. The high at the end is talking about her. She and she will and uh she will dwell, right? Baba Yathka right in your in your house, right? Wab Wabakatha or Slakya Wabakta, right? And will mourn for her father Atha Abaya, right? And her mother, Wa Atha Ama, right? Yarach Yamayam, meaning a month of days, right? Or a moon of days, which means a month, right? That's where you get the word month from. Uh, moon, right? Wa Harakan Tabawa'a, right? And afterwards, so you will bring uh, in to her um, Alia um, or Salakia. You will go in to her, right? Taba'a Alia, right? And um, and she will be your possession. Waba'al, Waba'al, Waba'al Tha, right? Because that word Bael it just means a uh, uh, lord or possessor, right? But you know, you can say you can say uh, husband, but that's not really what it means, right? It just means, you know, you're gonna, she's gonna be um, your possession, right? Wahaya, Wahayath, it's like a Wahayath. Um, Wahayata, right, and she will be unto thee, right, Laka, La Asha, or wife, right, but really is, right, really it says, and she will be unto thee, right, for a woman, right, meaning your woman, right. So verse 13 says, you will turn back to the clothing of her captivity from upon her and she will dwell in your house and will lament for her father for her mother a month of days and afterwards so you will go in unto her and she will be your possession and she will be unto thee for her wife verse 14 wahaya i'm la'a um khap Hazath, it's like a hap tazata, right? And afterwards, if uh, she does not please you, right? Or like if you are not pleased upon her, baha, right? Because that word kapataza, it just means uh, um, to be pleased or right uh, to be attentive right meaning you know if afterwards she's not you know she just isn't interesting unto you right um this is why uh the hebrew is a living language because it can be interpreted visually as well let's look at that word <laughs> Right, check this out. It's lucky. Right. 
right? Um, so this is the Paleo Hebrew. Ha, right? That means fence. Pa means mouth. Taza, right? That means side, right? So, you know, um, if you look at it closely, you know, it just looks like a man dwelling with his wife in their house, a tent, right? Here's a husband, here's a woman, there's a little head, you know, they're kind of, you know, locking eyes, right? Here's a door, you know, it's kind of, right? Even the Arabic, ha, pa, taza, would be like this, right? This is ha, pa, taza, you know, you kind of see the same thing, you know, locking eyes, you know, you know, just, just if you ever confound it on something, you know, you, you need a little extra, you know, um, just to get a little extra discernment, right? And it will come to pass if, if she, uh, if you are not pleased upon her, right? Washalakta, you will send her out. La na pash, na la. Um, la na pash ha, right? Uh, to her soul, right? You're going to send her out basically, right? Divorce her, whatever the case may be. Um, or actually, uh, yeah, it just, it just means to send her out, right? Um, right for so for a handmaid, you know. There is really isn't an account of uh, when you leave when you uh, divorce a handmaid. You know, you just kind of, um, you know, it just says send her out, right? So that's all you're gonna do, right? Um, Wambakar, meaning and to sell. La'a, ta, makarna. Makarna, right? And surely you will not sell her upon silver. Bakasap, laa, ta, ta aymar, right? Baha, and you will not make merchandise upon her, right? Meaning you're not going to sell her. You're not going to use her for a bargain. You know, bargain. You know, to get you know field crops or anything, right? You can't use her. Right, as a bargaining tool, right? You just sent her out, like Abraham did, right? He didn't necessarily give her, give Hagar a divorce. He just sent her out, right? Um, Tachath Ashar Anyatha, right? Instead, of that which you have humbled her, humbled her, right? So that word uh, Aymar, it also means a sheaf, right? Which is where you get the word merchandise from. Because a sheaf is like, for example, you got uh, <coughs> stacks of corn, right? <coughs> Bundled up, you know. A sheaf is a is a bundle of anything, right? It could be, it could be corn, right? Any crop. But it's bundled, right? Which in, that's what it means, bundle or merchandise, right? For example, you know, you go to a store, you have, right? You know them, uh, um, you know, a pack of uh, sodas. You know, they're kind of bundled up. You know, that's the merchandise. Same thing, right? Modern merchandise aged merchandise right but you couldn't take the woman and say here you know I'll give you this for this or you know anything in general right <laughs> because you humbled her right Um, and 
basically the whole point of that was because of the fact that you separated her from her uh, from her tribe, right? Because if she would have remained captive, she would have, you know, went where wherever her captive tribes had went, right? So she would have still been able to, uh, you know, kind of uh, reestablish herself. But now that you chose to, to, you took her into your house, right? And you made her change uh, her, her uh, customary dress, clothing, whatever the case may be, right? You were not to, uh, you know, use her as a bargaining tool or sell her after you popped her, right? Or after you uh, have uh, laid down with her, right? You know, so that's what it means because you have you have humbled her, right? So now she's she's sitting there, you know, and uh, you know, she doesn't have her tribe aware. She's uh, far away from her tribe, right? You already you laid with her. And on top of that, you, you want to sell her or make merchandise, you know, use her as a trade-off. You can't do that, right? That's what the law says, right? Kaya, uh, tahaya yan, right? Because there be uh, to a man, la ayash, shataya nashium, uh, two wives, right? Ha achath, right? The one, uh, love. Ahaba and the the and uh and one and the one is hated, right? Wa meaning and ha meaning the achath meaning one and the one is hated shana'a right the ha isn't uh you don't have to pronounce it because it's silent right right? Meaning, uh, and have brought forth unto thee sons, meaning one of the wife that is hated and one of the wife that is loved, right? So this is a, uh, this is giving you a scenario, right? Ha ahaba, waha shana, right? The loved and the hated, right? Meaning one child of each, right? Wahaya, Haban, Habakar, La Shanaya, La Shan, Ya'a, right? So it reads, and it will come to pass uh, the son of the firstborn be the one that is hated, right? Be of the one that is hated, right? So it reads uh, verbatim, because there be to a man two wives, and one loved and one hated, and they bring forth children, right? The loved and the hated, right? And it'll come to pass the son of the firstborn is of the one that is hated, right? Wahaya, Bayawam, Hanachal, Yalawa, or Salakia, Hanach. Anachayalwa, right? Will come to pass in the day, right, of their inheritance uh, to your sons or to their sons, Atha Banyawa, Atha Ashar Yahaya, right? Uh, to which uh, will uh, will be. Uh, to them, right? La'a yakol la'bakor, right? Meaning, uh, will not be able to the firstborn, right? Um, atha aban ha haba to the son of the one that it, of the uh the loved, right? Al Panaya before the face of the son, Ban Hashana of the hated, the firstborn, right? So it, it just reads, uh, and will come to pass in the day 
of their inheritance uh, to their sons, to that which would be to them, right, will not be able um, uh, to the firstborn, right, to the son of the loved, right, um, Uh, upon uh, before the son of the hated the firstborn right so basically it's saying um right when it comes a day for them to inherit right your uh, your sons right you're not going to be able to place right the son of the firstborn of the one that you loved before the son of the firstborn of the one that you hated right because the son of the one that you hated the wife that you hated he was the firstborn right kaya ata habakar ban shana because to the firstborn of the son of the hated right uh Ya kayar, ya meaning he, kayar meaning he will acknowledge, right? Which is where you get the word nakar from, which means a uh, stranger, to be estranged, or to acknowledge. Uh, lathath, to give to him, lawa, paya shanai, uh, paina, or slakia, paya, uh, shanyam, um, Which is, uh, says, um, because to the firstborn, the son of the hated, right, he will acknowledge to give unto him, right, a uh, double portion, paya shanyam, which literally means, um, mouth, uh, uh, twice, right. Which is a way to say double portion, right? So when it says Yakayar Lathath Lawo Paya Shanyam, it means he will acknowledge to give unto him to his mouth uh, twice. But really, you know, you can simply put it just says just means double portion, right? Bakal Ashar Yataza Yama Taza'a. Upon all which uh, will be found unto him, right? Um, Lawa, Kayahua, Raash, Raash Yath, uh, because he, he is the first of his vigor, Anawa, right? Which is vigor means a one, meaning the first of his, you know, uh, fruit, you know, strength, vigor, right? Because every time you have children, you have by the same woman, you know, the, um, you know, the, the firstborn is always, you know, the, uh, you know, the, you know, the most, um, not strongest, but, you know, it's really the, the first of your flesh. You know, which is really the, the top, the top of brass of your children, right? Because they have it, they have, uh, they have your looks, they have your, your intelligence, you know, maybe even the strength, but they, they receive, you know, the firstborn is always, you know, because every time a woman has children, you know, it takes a lot of their, uh, their vitamins and their, their, um, a lot it takes a lot out of a, out of a uh, female right so the firstborn is always you know the the choice right um lawa mashapat habakura right 
it is the first uh is the beginning of his vigor to him um this is the ordinance of the uh, firstborn right or the birthright right so it reads uh because to the firstborn the son of the hated he will acknowledge to give unto him double portion upon all right which will um which will uh which he will receive to himself because he is the beginning of his vigor um this is the ordinance of the uh firstborn right it's a lot of bear with me Verse 18, Kaya Yahayu La Ayash Ban Sarar, right? Um, because it be um, because there be to a man a son, um, Sarar means uh um the word sawar means uh to turn back right but here it's uh you know whenever you add you know an extra letter um in certain instances which I'm not gonna look look that up but um you know it kind of uh magnifies the word right here it says defiant, but it's talking about um, a man that has a uh, backsliding son, right? And it doesn't concretely say mean that, right? But it's in the sense of turning back, right? Um, because there be to a man a son, right? Um, you know. You can just say rebellious is, or salaki, not rebellious, but um, you know, you can say um, a backslider, backslider, right? And rebellious, wa mara, because that wa is, is supplementary, right? Um, backslider and rebellious, right? Ayan nawa, right? And does not hear Shammai uh, upon the voice Bakwal of his father Abiyawa, Abba Yawa, Abaya Wa Salakia, and upon the voice of his mother Wa Bakwal Amawa, um, Waya uh, Waya Sarwa. Right, and uh, they chastise to him, Atawa, right? Because that word Yasar um, means to rebuke or chastise, right? Wala Yashamai, they do not hear, and he does not hear unto them, Al Yaham, right? So it reads, Because there be to a man a son backslider and rebellious uh, which does not hear in the voice of his father and upon the voice of his mother right and they chastise him and he, he does not uh, hearken unto them Wata Pashwa Bawa Abayawa right um, Wa Amawa right and they take hold upon him his father and his mother right waha tazaya awa right and they bring him out to him atawa to the elders al zakwan zakwanya right of the city ayarwa 
um, Wa'al Shayar into the gate, right, of of the their place, Maqwam Wa, right. Um, Wa Marwa Al Zakwanya, they will say to the elders of the city of their city, Ayarwa. Banawa, meaning our son, this, za, um, sarar, is a backslider. Wamara, rebellious, you see the wa isn't there, right? Ayanawa, right, does not, he does not hear, shamai, upon our voice, bakwal, nawa, uh, zalal, wasaba, right? Uh, meaning he is a glutton. Right, uh, being a glutton and a drunkard, right? Now I'm gonna go over what the rationale be behind that word is a lull, right? Shalaki, I'll get that real quick. Um, bear with me. Um, let's see. Right, so let, first let's get Harley, right? That's not what that means, but I'm gonna get to it. So like, yeah, Harley, which is Zana, which, which literally means fornicate, right? Or fornicator, right? To commit fornication, right? Zana, right? Um, Arabic says uh, from right to left, Zana, a whoremonger, Zanun, um, or Zanin. Yeah, Zanin, whoremonger, right? So it just means, uh, right, fornicator, right? That word's Zana, right? Which is also known as a, a harlot, right? But get this, right? So I'm going to show you what is the law, because all these words are, I'm going to bring you, right, Zana, right? Harlot. Fornicator, right? Zanab. Tail, right? Rear, back, or slaki. Tail, rear, right? It's what a harlot does. They they sell their rear, right? <laughs> you got Jake. You know he does that too. You know by selling out, right? Um, like scripture says that uh, um. What profiteth a man if he cast away his vows? That's in uh, his bowels, as in, you know, he he has to, uh, you know, ride the goat, right? You want to be part of this, uh, uh, those um, secret societies, right? Which is really, right, uh, nonsense, right? So you have. Zanab, you have Zana, right? And Zana is a derivative of Zawan, right? Which means, um, right, uh, Salakia, just bear with me, it's loading. Zawan, Salakia. To nourish, to feed, to give food. Right, so it can be used in a regular sense, in a positive sense, or in a negative sense. I'm gonna give you an example. Right. Um, Jeremiah five and eight. I know there's more precepts to that. Zawan to feed. Right. 
Samaritan, but the Syriac says Zan. Um, actually, I believe that's a Y right there. Zawan. That little looks like a uh, something. I don't know. Looks like a corn dog. I guess that's supposed to be a Y diacritic. Right, which is a vowel, right? Same thing. Uh, wazan to weigh testicles. That's off. That's what the Arabic says. Bug that. Um, testicles. Sick, Ishmael. Sick bastard. Um, Zawan food sustenance. Uh, Zawan to nourish, to feed, to give food. Um, Was on, yeah, same thing. All right. I want to read it. it. Might say something sick, like not sack or something. Cause this is in the law as well. You're running to this word, right? I'm trying to find where it's at. Uh. Anyways, you're running to it. Um. Jeremiah 5 and 8, right? So it means to uh, feed or to nourish, right? So it says, uh, Sawasium horses, right? Mayazanium, um, right? Um, Mashakium, right? Um, so horses, right, uh, were fed, uh, this says in the morning, right, but that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about drawing of, uh, drawing them out, right? Ma meaning of, or Salaki Mashak means to draw out, or Mawash, recede, right or uh simply um i believe it's masha right to draw out uh so it says horses right uh were fed uh drawing out them hayawa drawing uh um drawing drawing them out right they there were men ayash La Ashath, right? Um, men towards towards the uh, the wife of his neighbor, Ra'iwa, Yatazahalwa, right? Um, right, meaning uh, says Nade, right, which is uh. Right, which means uh to shine. Right, um, to neigh, right, cry shrilly, make shining. Right, compared to Tazahar, which means uh, oil or noonday, right? Um, let me see, noon, see what I get, or noon, yeah, Tazahar, right, um, Slack, yeah. 
that's talking about the Lord is talking about uh, when the children of Israel uh, through Jeremiah he said spoke about them assembling by troops in the harlot's houses right it says like horses which are fed which drew them which uh, were drawn out they were men uh, drawn out to the uh, woman of to the wife of his neighbor, right? Uh, they they neighed or they shined, right? Meaning you know they were they were um, excited, as in that this is talking about the facial expression, right? Which is why it says nay, right? To glean, to be cheerful, right? various animal or human expressions right in the sense of you know being wide-eyed you know your tongue is all out you know um and that's what you know horses do when they get excited you know they start to cry out you know in the sense of name right which is derived from tazahar means oil or to shine right rejoice right Psalms 1 and 4 and 15 and wine to make a glad the heart of man and make an oil to make his face to shine and bread which strengtheneth strengtheneth man's heart right it's talking about the countenance right but that's what uh, the words of wine means, right? To feed or nourish, right? So Zawan um, is where Zana is derived from. Zana means, to for Zana means to fornicate. Zawan means to be fed or to be nourished, right? Which, you know, um, you know, which is like scriptures say that, you know, men that are without understanding are like the beasts that perish. Right, so like animals, you know, that's what the other nations do. They, they don't care what what they have to do. You know, as long as they're they're being they're being fed, you know, they're willing to do anything. Right, bow to an idol, you know, uh, be unrighteous, you know. So, and that's all the resolve, right? Um. And if you go, you can look up the elders, apostles of the Great Millstone. They go over that breakdown where, where it talks about in the book of Revelation, you know, fornication. That word for fornication, look it up. It literally says uh, to give to wife, right? Or to give a wife or something like that, right? Because, right, when these other nations fornicate with Esau, meaning his, uh, his customs, you know, they follow his ways, they, they uh, trade with him. They go, they follow, right, his, his, his uh, pagan ways, right? They don't care. They'll do anything, right? Um, which is why the scriptures say they'll lament when they see uh, uh, the place Babylon, America, Babylon, great burning. Because this is how they were made rich, given abundance, right? Um, so, yeah, right? I'm not going to actually, let's see. Ah, Salakia. First, let me finish this, right? So that word Zana is a derivative of Zawan, right? Because they, you know, Book of Psalms says, you know, they, like hypocritical mockers, they feast, they uh, feed themselves, right? Obadiah chapter 1 says, those that have, that have eaten up the bread have lifted up, uh, have lifted up uh, themselves against thee, right? Those who were weak are now saying they are strong, right? Um, so yeah, that's where you get Zana from, right? Because that's what a harlot does. She fornicates to feed her belly, right? Like the other nations, right? Um, and now, uh, which is Zalal, which means glutton, right? Which is a derivative of Zawan. Right, not Zana. I was just comparing it with Zawan, but um, Zawan, and then you have uh, 
Ah, uh, so like you. Let me see if I still have it pulled up. Not the lie. No, where the hell I got this from? Oh yeah, kind. Right. Um. Feeble. Right. Check this out. Um, let's see. Dull, which means, uh, literally means, uh, where you get the word dalath from, it means, uh, to hang down, right? Or, right, um, so dull, right? This means feeble. Something hanging, swinging, the leaf of a door, right? Which is where you get the word dalath, which means hinge or door, right? Or book. Right, because it's you know it's hanging off something, right? Door is hanging off a hinge, right? And a book has it, it's it's uh by it's it's um through the middle, right? It's held together, right? By the pages pages being sewn and glued or whatever the case may be, together, right? The lull, right? Which is. <clears throat> And that word dull, right, means feeble as in, you know, your arms just hang down, you know, you know, like, um, kind of like this, you know, let me show you, right, that, you know, um, you know, so this is somebody with their head kind of hanging down in their hands, you know, just hanging down to the side, you know, which they're kind of like, ah, oh, man, you know, um, I give up, you know, they're feeble, right, and then you have, uh, which is, um, basically that's, that's where you get, uh, Zalal from, which is dull, or Dala or Dalal, right? That's talking about hanging down, right? Feebleness, right? Um, as in your hands hanging down, as in, you know, you're feeble, you know? Because what do you do, you know, when you kind of like, when somebody just kind of has their hands like this, oh man, or you know, oh well, you know, oh well, oh man, oh well, you know. So, you know, it's talking about uh, feebleness, like, you know, um, unuseful, right? Useless, right? The law, I mean, you can really say, you know, the law also you can use it to denote un uselessness, right? Dull, feeble, right? Which is where you really, the law come from, because it's a derivative of Zawan, meaning to feed. Um, um, right, and, uh, um, the lull, right, meaning feeble or, you know, um, hanging down, you know, because really, you know, that's what, you know, that's a glutton, right, it's a lull, glutton, you know, feeding, you know, um, and you're feeble because you, you don't know how to control yourself, right? You have, you're, you're weak, right? <laughs> the lull, to hang down, pendulous, to swing, to wave, right? Um, let's see if we find anything useful here. Right, feeble, right? So, you know, Zawan, meaning to feed. Uh, Dalal, feeble, 
right? Zalal, feed feeble, right? I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're feeble minded, you know, you can't control your, you know, uh, dangle, right? You know, you, you're always dangling food in your mouth, right? The la, which is a, uh, a way to say bucket, to hang down, right? The la, hang down. Right, as in hang down a bucket to draw water, you know, or you just, you know, you're always hanging down food above you and you're just, you know, you're glutton. Right, to draw water, as in, you know, hanging down a bucket, right, because there's an actual word for bucket, uh, which is, um, I don't think that's it. Let me see. Let's just type in tro. Slackia. I know that's in Genesis. Tro. Or basin. I have to put in basin. And that's not what that means. Tro. Rachat. That means gutter. Right. But it's figurative of a basin, but it just means like, you know, the shape of it describes the shape of the basin, but that means gutter. Let's get this right here. And she hastened to do a picture to the tro. Um, Genesis 24 and 20. Shaquat, which is really where you get the word, uh, I believe that's Shaqua meaning to water or to irrigate, right? You know, so that just, you know, there's different ways to say the same thing, but they each have their own uses and operations, right? So yeah, you there you go, you know? So it says verbatim, and we'll say to the elders of the city, our son this, right? Uh, he is a son, our son there, um, our son this is a backslider and rebellious. Uh, he does not hear in our voice, right? Zalal, meaning uh, he is a glutton, wasaba, and drunkard, right? Wa ragam, ragamawa, call anash, anashia. Right, and they will uh, pile upon him, and they will pile to him all the men of the city. Ayarwa, because that word ragam means uh, to uh, pile up. That's another way to say stone. Sakwal, meaning to, to weigh. They're going to weigh stones upon him, or they're going to pile stones upon him, as, as in they're going to pelt him with stones, or they're going to stone him with stones. Right? Call Anashia. All the men of the, of the city, Ayarwa, Ba Abanyam, upon stones, and will die, Wamath, Wa Bayartha, you will consume to the evil, Harai, from your mist, Makorabka, and all Israel, right, will call Yasha Allah, they will hear, Yashamaiwa, and will fear, right? Uh, wa right? So that's what uh, right? It it means that's what it says. Let's see how many verses we got? Twenty-two. Um, two more uh, verses. Wakaya yahaya, baayash, khataa, and because there be in man sin um mashapat that is a uh, um uh condemnable condemnable right of death mawath right or you can say sentence right so mashapat means sentence ordinance right or condemnation right 
and because there be in man a sin, right, a condemnation of death, waha, uh, waha math, right, um, and and he be put to death, watha, um, watha layatha, watha layath, right. Athawa, and he will be suspended to him, as then you're going to uh, suspend him in the air by hanging. Because that word, the laya, it, it just means to suspend, right? But, you know, obviously you're going to, you know, hang that person, or, you know, you might put him to death, you know, maybe suspend him by his arms, and then put him to death, you know. While he's suspended. Right. But really I'm assuming it was done. He was put to death before that. And then he was suspended really to. Uh, to instill fear. Upon the people not to go off. Right. Uh, so he will spit. And he will be, he will be suspended. Right. Upon a tree. Al Aitaza. Right. Which some camps say that Yahushai was hanged. Some say he was. Uh, tied to a tree, you know, so it doesn't really say exactly how he was uh, crucified, right? So you can't say he was hanged on the tree, you know, just because it reads that in the text when if you go into those words, it doesn't actually say that, you know. Um, so let's, let's visit that word suspend, as in suspend in the air. Deuteronomy 21, 22. Uh, yeah. So yeah, this chapter, you know, you're not pretty sure, familiar with the words, you know, could be a doozy. The la. So yeah, it's not the liar, it's the la. To suspend, hang up, right? Doesn't say hang by the neck, hang by the arm, hang upside down, right? Which is the Arabic says, I believe that says Dalal, right? Let down, dangle, rope. Uh, the uh, Syriac says Thal, or Salakia Thala, which is Thala'a, right? The la Ethiopic, I'm not really sure what that says. I guess that's the tha. Um, I don't know. Uh, let's look it up real quick since we got a little bit extra time. Um, um, Sabian or Slack it. Emric, Emric script, I believe that's how you say it. All right, so or geese, 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 z geese, guz, and weird ass heathens, guz, geese, jizz. Like it. I'm just I'm just joking. Um uh damn what the hell? So let's see we got uh looked like a uh ha. um let's see Damn that's crazy why do you need so many letters So that last letter is Wa. Oh yeah, the, it looked like a tha. Um, tha tha. Let's see. Man, you guys are weird. Oh, here it is. Ta. So it's Ta Wa, and then the one, the one in the middle looks like the uh, Syriac Sa for Sa. For Sa or Salakia. Uh, let me go back. 
Damn. Shit, that's not it. I think I clicked out of it. Um. Damn. Just uh, screenshot it. Nah, I'm not gonna do all that. Um. Which is that is the Kushite. That's uh the Kushite script, right? It's known as Sabian. Uh, I believe uh get is Emraic Emric or uh, Ethiopic, which is Kush, Kawash, which means dark face. Um, damn, where the hell is that from? Which is, um, that might be, I guess that's a La, the Lawa, right? Thal, Thal, uh, Thalwa. Or a thawa. It might be a ha. Let me check real quick. Um, jizz. That's funny. Damn. Um, here it is. So it looks like that word it might be sa. Yeah, it looks like the, it's sa. Uh, so it'd be ta sa ta sa wa. Ya sa wa. I don't know, that's weird. Um, so yeah, right? So verse 22 says, And because there be upon man a sin, um, a, which is a sentence, uh, which which is a, a condemnation of death, right? And he die, and you will um, hang him upon a tree, right? Or suspend him upon a tree, right? Because really, that's that's what it means. Doesn't mean impale, right? Uh, so you know, in a simplified, it just says, and be because there be. In man a sin which is uh, con um, condemnable by death right and he be put to death you will suspend him upon a tree la a talayan nabal tawa nabal nabal nabalathwa right uh, he will not tarry his corpse upon the tree al ha itaza because Surely you will bury him, right? Kayak wabar, tak wabar nawa. Bayawam ha hawa, in the day that is, right? Meaning in that same day, right? Kaya kualal kualal ta, because it is abhorrent uh, to God, right? Which really this says uh, powers, which is abhorrent to the powers. Right, uh, to suspend uh, Salakia or um, um, to suspend him, right, or to leave him suspended, Thalo Thal Waya, right, um, Walaa Thatama. And you will not defile uh, to your ground, Atha, Adam, Adamathka, which the Lord your power has given unto thee to inherit. Shor Yahweh Alahayaka Nathan Laka Nachala. Right? And that word Kualal, it doesn't mean curse, right? The word Kualal means to make light, or, you know, light bread, which you read about in, in the, uh, I believe that's Numbers, right? Um, when the Israelites said, you know, they were tired of eating the manna, they said, you know, why should we have this light bread? 
that's literally what kolal means to be light or to make light of something right to abhor right so when the lord says we're going to be cursed it doesn't mean you know um abracadabra or you know you know witch curse that's it has nothing to do with that right this is talking about the curses are really a way the most high abhorred us for turning back from him right so that word kolal right it means an abhorring right because god abhors right anyone that is left that way suspended on a tree right because it's not a good look right uh like jake says right in the world right so with that right this is uh deuteronomy chapter 21 going into the hebrew Right, Lord willing, you were edified, giving honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Kakwadash, double honors to the heroes and apostles, a great millstone, Kwam Yasha Allah, Abad Babal, and Shalom.